त्यांच्या कामाची व्याप्ती त्यांच्या ओळखीतल्यानुच नाही तर त्यांच्या साहित्यिक सामाजिक ओळखीतल्यान घडतात उक्तामन सोहळ्याच्या बीज भाषणातल्या बोमाने स्पारो आनंद हांची तुमकां ओळख घडल्यास त्यांची वेगळी ओळख करून दिवपाची तशी गरज उरूंक ना पण एक औपचारिकता म्हणून ही लहानशी ओळख साहित्य अकादमीचो दोन हजार सतरा वर्षाचो बाल साहित्य पुरस्कार वाईल्ड चाईल्ड या पुस्तकात फावो जाल्ले हे लेखिकेक देश विदेशात प्रभावी कथान कथा कथनकार म्हणून आमंत्रणा येतात स्पॅनिश जर्मन भासाने त्यांच्या पुस्तकांचो आसपाव झाला निर्भय बनो पतीचो ध्यास आशिल्ल्यान व्यापक नदरेची धाडशी लेखिका म्हणून तिची ओळख आसा ब्रिटन भूटान बांगलादेश जर्मनी फ्रान्स स्वित्झर्लंड या देशांनी आपल्यो काणयो सादर करपी हे लेखिकेक आम्ही आमच्या गोंय राज्यातूय तितलेच अपूर्बायेन येवकारतात मागता भोमाने पारूत आनंद हांचे कडेन की ताणी आपली कथा सादर करची सो वी काइंडली रिक्वेस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड मॅम मिसेस पारो आनंद टू कंटिन्यू आर सेशन विथ अर शॉर्ट स्टोरी प्रेझेंटेशन द रिझन वाय आय लाईक टू स्टँड विथ अ स्टँड माय इफ आय स्टँड बिहाइंड दॅट यू कॅन ओनली सी अ लिटल बिट ऑफ माय टेच जस्ट यू कॅन सी व्हेरी शॉर्ट so the book i'm going to read uh, to you today uh, is an action thriller uh, it's called wingless but it's not just called wingless it's called wingless a fairly weird fairy tale this morning i talked about fairy tales are not the only thing we give to children and should not be and now i'm going to tell you a fairy tale and i decided on this one for the afternoon session because you'll all be sleepy and i thought let me wake you up <laughs> wingless a fairy weird fairy tale a princess is born when princess chutki was born to the king and queen of angels there should have been much rejoicing and happiness there should have been music festivals feasts and gifts there should have been a smile on the face of everyone who lived in the diamond and silver land where king quick silver and queen sparkling gem ruled justly and wisely just as any good king and queen should in any good fairy tale but this isn't a good fairy tale it's a fairly weird fairy tale ah. so none of these joyful things happen no musical instruments were broken bam feasts that cooks had been preparing for weeks and weeks were thrown away for crows and dogs and cats to feed on gifts wrapped and ready for the new princess were hidden away in darkest corners for dust to settle on and spiders to spin their webs on get um the smiles on the faces of everyone turn to frowns or even tears <laughs> real watery salty tears not the tiny diamonds and pearls that angels weep on the few occasions when angels weep and those who wept hardest of all were king quick silver and queen sparkling gem They had so looked forward to this baby and hoped she would be everything that a good and perfect angel should be. And she was perfect. Well, almost, but she wasn't perfect enough. What was wrong with her? What was wrong with her? She was wingless. She was born without wings. people who came to see her 
opened their eyes wide with horror as their jaws fell with loud thuds to the floor. Some were speechless and hurried wordlessly away. Others could only weep and wash the floor with their tears. There were so many tears that it became a swimming pool. Still others had tongues that would not stop wagging. The king and queen must have done something very bad to have had a daughter like this. The kingdom of angels is doomed. The end is in sight. We must kill this freakish princess before she kills us. She has brought hell to heaven. No, she must be punished. She must be killed. As the news spread like wildfire and people started to gather at the palace gates, the king and queen took the baby in her crib and moved to the highest room, up the highest staircase, up the highest tower, to the highest room, and there they locked the door. <coughs> As the news spread like wildfire, the wagging tongues grew louder and still louder till all the kingdom was one. Shout! <laughs> Peace was shattered. Even the diamond domes of the palace came cracking and tumbling down. And the angels all gathered in one place began to shout in one voice, Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! The king's face grew grey with worry. The queen's face grew white with fear, but the shouting wouldn't stop. The shouting from outside still went on. Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! And when I tell this story to children, I make them the angels and gosh, they have a lot of fun shouting, kill her, kill her, kill her. Especially when I tell them, Shout so loudly that the principal of the school wonders, Kya ho rai? <laughs> Now, can you imagine? Anger is a cool emotion or hot emotion? What is it? Little louder? I can't hear? Hot. So, what happens? Your face gets red. Dhuwa comes out of your ears, your teeth grit, your eyes become big. And can you imagine if not one, not two, not ten, not fifty, but all the angels of the land, all of Goa, all of Maharashtra, all of Gujarat, all of India, all of the world, all of the universe, Everybody gathered in one place, all are hot and angry, and what are they shouting? And what are they shouting? Again, sit up straight. You have to digest your lunch, such a tasty lunch we got. Sit up straight, take a big breath, and in the angels of the land shouted in one voice. <laughs> King Quicksilver just didn't know what to do. Because by now, all that heat, I, I, can you imagine the climate change then? You were talking about climate change, goodness, all these angels, all hot and angry, all shouting. So much climate change that the silver street that they were standing on melted and became a silver river. And the angels are swimming about and splashing about and still shouting and we know what they're shouting. King Quicksilver said, 
I just don't know what to do. He said to his queen, whose face was now as white as a page on which not a word has been written. The queen said in a voice watery with tears, let's ask Nanima. After all, she's a thousand and three years old. Perhaps she has seen something like this and knows what to do about it. So Nanima was called. She was completely deaf, you see, being a thousand and three years old. And so she hadn't heard the wagging tongues and shouting voices. She only saw with amazement the people splashing about in silver streams instead of walking sensibly on silver streets. Must be some kind of new passion for fashion, she muttered to herself. Oh, she had seen passion for fashion come and go, never liked a single one. Not for her these latest crazes in handbags and shoes and hairstyles and everything. She stuck to the fashions of a thousand and three years old when women who were women wore sea green seaweed gowns. All her clothes were made out of seaweeds and these she kept fresh in underwater cupboards. So she looked quite a sight as she splashed through the rivers of silver and came to the palace door. She was shown to the bedroom where King Quicksilver and Queen Sparkling Gem sat sadly on either side of their baby. Oh, she cried out. Oh, why wonderful! Twin Gem and Sparkling Silver! She could never ever get their names right. Not even her own daughter's name. What was the king's name? King? King? Quicksilver and Queen? Sparkling gem, very good, you're paying attention despite the delicious lunch. <laughs> <coughs> and what does she call them? Why, quick gem and sparkling silver, you've had a baby, how wonderful, how what darlings to call me. She rushed to the baby's bedside and peered in. Why, how beautiful, how lovely, what a good little baby angel. But as she lifted the baby up, into the, her arms and the sheets and pillows fell off. She let out a cry of alarm. Eh, 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 she shrieked in horror. But what is this? This is an angel baby without wings. What's the use of an angel baby without wings? What is the meaning of this? Her hands fluttered around like restless butterflies. <laughs> what is the meaning of this fucking gem? Actually, we wanted to ask you the meaning of this, said the queen in a voice that would be rude to anyone but the hard of hearing. But the thousand and three-year-old Nanima could not and would not hear. Why, quick slipper and sprinkling gent, she shouted in a shaky voice, I say that you are doomed. Then in a voice now edged in black lace, as is only proper when speaking of bad things, she continued, What you have done, quack slicker and sprinkling jet, no one has ever dared to do before. Only sorrow and tears will follow you now. Sorrow and tears. wind on a moonless night. She swept out of the palace, leaving only the old smell of seaweed behind her. Because she wore seaweed garments. And then Dadima is called. Now Dadima is a, almost a thousand and three years, even older than Nanima. I'm forgetting the number. Uh, if Nanima hasn't seen anything like this. Maybe the thousand and uh, in a thousand and three years, perhaps Dadima has. She's two thousand years and three sixty-four days old. So when is her birthday? 
Think, 2,000 years and 364 days. When is our birthday? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, why? Because then she'll become 365 days old, which is a whole year. Dadima, being a whole thousand years older than Nanima, she couldn't hear and she couldn't see. But she was a great swimmer, so she swam in a great race with herself. She wore her hair, her long hair flowed like serpents all around her. She wore her hair long, which was just as well because she wore nothing else. Her hair was so thick and long, she needed no clothes. When she went, was taken up to see the baby and uh, her hands were put onto the baby, she shouted, A baby! Boomed the baby in a voice that shook the already crack cracking and tumbling domes. Oh, why son, well done! She said, slapping the queen hard on her back. <coughs> This sent the poor queen into a long and lasting coughing fit. She didn't notice. Dadima didn't notice. Who notices a daughter-in-law, right? <laughs> so she grabbed the baby bottom side up into her arms. She felt the baby's new and smooth bottom lovingly. Why? What a beautiful smooth face this baby has. <laughs> For goodness sakes, where is where are its eyes? Where is its nose? Oh, for goodness sakes, this baby has no ears. The king and queen managed to smile for the first time. The queen turned the baby right side up so the grandmother could examine her more correctly. Oh, said Dadima realizing her mistake. Oh, thank you. Look here. There's something missing. She let out a bellow like an enraged bull. There's something missing. Do you realize that this is an angel baby without wings? Do you know that angels must always but always have babies with wings? Fun! And here she caught hold of the queen by her ear and swung her like a helicopter above her. <laughs> Finally, she let her go, and in walking over her, she almost tripped and fell. Oh ho, what's this bundle of dhobi clothes doing in the middle of the floor? Really, queen, you don't know how to live like a queen. What is heaven coming to? And, and with the baby still in her hand, she went to the window, and the king said, Ma. And Dadima flung the baby back to her parents and took a superb swallow dive out of the window. Unfortunately, why did she dive? Because there's a river below, right? But unfortunately, the angry people had got quite hungry and gone home for dinner. And the silver river had turned back into a silver road. Here comes Dadima, highest tower, highest staircase. Bah! Fortunately, her long, thick hair broke her fall instead of her bones. She got up and she realized that because of that long fall, all her hair had fallen out. And you know, she wore, she wore, no. But luckily, fortunately, everybody had gone home. So no one saw the Nangu Pangu Dadima <laughs> dusting silver dust off herself and stomping off. Angels without wings, Dhobi clothes in the middle of palaces, roads that become rivers, rivers that become roads. What's next? What's next? And what's next is what you will have to read. So you will have to buy the book and I'll become richer and you'll become wiser. <laughs> Thank you.
It was a joy listening to you, ma'am. We really enjoyed and thank you very much for that. तुम कल गीत सगे फकत कथा आयकल सगैं कथा जगिच एक अनुभव मेला आसतलो भोमान इज आसावरी दोषी कथा कथन हो तुम छंद द बुक दैट स्पीक ऑफ ऑडियो पॉडकास्ट आूट्यूब चैनल ती चल बहुभाषिक व्यक्तिमत्व आ प्रभावी कथान कथनकार तिका मान्यता लगता हा विनंती करता कि अपनी कथा सादर कर नमस्कार बोक्या सातबंडे दिलीप प्रभावकर पुस्तक योषी बयाच जन कदाचित महती आती नसती तो महती होती ये भरपूर भाग है तथल एक गोष्टी का थोड़ा सा भाग मी कवर करना सा प्रयत्न करती है कारण पूर्ण गोष वे अभावी नहीं करता गोष्टीच नाव है दादाच नाटक बोक्या जर को बैकग्राउंड महती न से थोड़क संगते मैं आज स्टोरी टेलिंग और रीड अलाउड यहाँ थोड़ा सा कॉम्बिनेशन करते वे अभावी बोक्या मुंबई दादर विभाग में रहना मुलगा आई वड़ील दादा विजू दादा एक महत्वाच कैरेक्टर आजी हे अस एक छोटस कुटुंब है आजी ही एकमेव व्यक्ति है ती बोक्याला ओरिजिनल नावाने मजे चिन्मयानंद बोलावते बाकी दुनियात तो को चिन्मयानंद मनत नहीं इन्क्लूडिंग ते आई बाबा सगे बोक्या मिलता तो हा बोक्या अतिशय धड़पड़ा मुलगा सगना मदद कराई दादाशी कि ही भांडला तरी मदद कराई है दादाला तो त्रासा बगू शकत नहीं असा तर कैरेक्टर है तो दादाच नाटक दादा ने स्वतः एक नाटक लिखल है कॉलेज मधे कॉम्पिटिशन है स्पर्धा है नाटका की दादा ने नाटक लिखल है स्वतः डिरेक्ट के एंड ही इज परफॉर्मिंग द मेन रोल इन दैट प्ले आता मैं प्रॉब्लेम का दोन दिवस नाटक आल क्या नाटका एक छोटा सा पण महत्वा रोल करना बिलव ऋषि एक साधुच कैरेक्टर है तो कलाकार आडवा जा पंद्रह दिवस आता अलाउड नहीं है तो कुछ ही बाहर जाऊ शक नहीं आता हा रोल करना को अपने बोक्या महाराज दादाजी मदती प्रगट है दादा विचार पड़ला है क्या कराए आता कॉलेज मधे शत्रुपक्ष मित्रपक्ष वगैरह प्रकरण चाली तो तिथे एक अंकुश तामले मन एक कैरेक्टर है जे दादा प्रत्येक गोष्टी खोड़ घाला तरी तो जे कराला जाए विजय सातबंडे तहतरी गड़बड़ कराई अंकुश तामले चरवेल काम है मोड़ता घाला प्रत्येक गोषी दादाला को नवीन कलाकार नहीं है दादा तो एकदम पंचायत आता बोक्या दादाला सुचवतो को गल घलत का वेग आइडिया है का नहीं ऋषि कैरेक्टर है ज्यादा जरा मोटा मनसा रोल है तो गल घ बाबा दोन मिनट झटका आया सारे का वेड़ लगे का तुला मी का कॉलेज की एकांकिका मी कस करेन तो शक्य नहीं है माला है पता शेवटी बाबा हा मुला बाबा मननेपेक्षा मित्र जास्त है मुला गल घी है नर बाबा मनत बर ठीक है करीन मी माला कोई ओखता काम नहीं है इम्पॉर्टंट है मुल मनता ठीक है बाबा आम्मी तुम्हारा ना साधु बनवन टैक्सी ढकलून तुम्हारा कॉलेज मधे घेन जो हे ठीक है मग ऐक्चुअली एकांकिके का दिवस उजाड़ है बोक्या ने सभी बाबा मदद के लिए पाठांतरा आजी मदद करती है आजी का आधी अस ठरल होता कि मज़ा लेख काम करना है मजा नातवा ने नाटक लिखल है तेने दिग्दर्शित के लिए तो काम करते मैं भारी टेन्शन ये मैं नहीं बता आयत्या होते कि आजी तिथे अचानक ये कारण बाबा चश्मा विसर है बाबा नाव है प्रदीप सातबंडे आटका को कड़ू नए मनु नाव बदल बाबा साहेब कुचक भिंगे ये नाव को शोधन काड़ल देवाला महती पाबा नाव कलाकार मन संगे तो आजी प्रगट जा है बोक्या विजू तो आजीला बगुन हे आजी तू इत कशी मानती ना तू अरे कस मन तो चश्मा विसरला कि प्रतिभा चश्मा ना तो कस हो आजी साधु कभी चश्मा लाइन बसत का नाटक तस नवे रे का पाठांतर वगैरह कराए तो भर 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 ठीक है ठीक है अस मन जी आधी नहीं मन होती ती आजी प्रेक्षागृह विजू दादा मित्र मैत्रिणी बरबर वेफर्स पप्पन खात बसली 
छान पैकी नाटक बढ़ाया तिच व्यवस्थित सोई जाएन आता नाटका अनाउंसमेंट जा विजय सातबंड सादर करीत है बेताल गड़ा पायथया घड़े एक ऐतिहासिक सत्य घटने पर आधारित नाटक जिथे गोपाल मृत्यू लेखक दिग्दर्शक विजय सातबंडे वगैरह वगैरह सग स इंट्रो जाए कलाकार को सगल नाटक सुरू जा विजय सातबंडे स्वत राजपुत्रा भूमिके तिथे अ मंचका बसले सॉरी तो मे तो, तो तक टेन्शन नहीं एरजारा घो तो राणी साहेब मंचका पर बसले बाबा की एंट्री नर है ते जरा स्टेज या बाहर कॉलेज की एक क्लासरूम मेकअप रूम मधे कन्वर्टेड होती बरबर होता चौकीदार होक्या बरबर होता बाबा दाढ़ी निशा लगे सगल चढ़ला 
मारतो त्याच्यात म्हणजे त्यांच्यावर वार करतो आणि बाबा धडाम दिशी मंत्र म्हणता म्हणता तडफडत खाली कोसळतात आता प्रेक्षकात बसलेलं कोण बरं अस्वस्थ झालं असेल हा सीन बघून बाप रे खर बाई अग लागलं का माझ्या प्रदीपाला काय त्यांनी मारामारी करायची ती असं आजी आपलं मोठ्याने शेजारच्या मुलीने तिला जरा समजावलं हो आजी ते सगळं खोट आहे बसा तुम्ही आणि आता इकडे विजूदादा रांजणातनं बाहेर आला आणि त्याची आणि किल्लेदाराची हे सुरू झाली मारामारी किल्लेदाराला मारलं त्याने आणि ते जर दोन शिपाई होते त्यातला एक हे सगळे जे लाईट्स वगैरे होते त्यावेळी स्टेजवर त्याच्या वायरमध्ये पडकून तो कधीच आडवा झाला होता त्याच्यामुळे तो कसाच आडवा पडून राहिला त्याला मारामारी करण्याची जराही इच्छा नव्हती दुसरा होता तो जो तलवारीचा सीन झाला प्रोफेसर टिल्लून बरोबर त्याला त्याच्या नाकावर त्या तलवारीचा नंतर एक फटका बसला त्याच्यामुळे तो जो हजरला तो पुढे आलाच नाही त्याच्यामुळे फक्त किल्लेदारच होता लढायला तो गेला आणि राजपुत्र चंद्रसेन लढाई जिंकला आता त्यांना कळ म्हणजे तेव्हा त्यांना कळलं की नाटकात असं कळलं की ऋषी गेले आणि त्यांच्या बलिदानामुळेच आम्ही स्वतंत्रच होतोय वगैरे वगैरे बिल्व ऋषी मरून पडले अरे रे 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 पण या तपस्वी बिल्व ऋषींसारखे अनेक आहेत आमच्या पाठीशी स्वातंत्र्याची प्रेरणा द्यायला आम्ही स्वतंत्र आहो आम्ही स्वतंत्र राहू एक सांगायचं राहिलं अंकुश दामले हे जे शत्रुपक्ष होता जे मध्ये ऍक्च्युली झांजा वाजवून नाटकामध्ये व्यत्यय आणणार होते किंवा टॉमॅटो वगैरे काहीतरी करून त्यांना त्या दोन मेन काय म्हणतात मस्तीखोरांना बोक्याने फार मोठी ट्रिक करून नाटकाच्या आधीच एका क्लासरूममध्ये बंद करून ठेवलं होतं आणि त्याच्यामुळेच फक्त वन स्मोर एवढंच तर तो बाकीचा कंपू बोलू शकला कारण त्यांचा भुरक्या होता आतमध्ये त्यांना ऑर्डर कोण देणार की वाजवा रे झांजा त्याच्यामुळे नाटक एकदम निवांत पार पडले आता नाटक संपलं बोक्या स्टेजवर आला आणि त्याने बाबांना उठवलं बाबा चला नाटक संपला झालं का आणि बाबांचा खरा पाय मुरगळला जेव्हा ते असे मरून पडण्याची ॲक्टिंग केली तेव्हा आणि मग सगळ्यांनी प्रोफेसरांनी सगळ्या विद्यार्थ्यांनी विजय सातभंडेचं कौतुक केलं की नाटक ॲक्टिंग डायलॉग सगळंच खूप सुंदर होतं वगैरे वगैरे बोक्या बाबांना आणि आजीला घेऊन टॅक्सीतून घरी आला ते नाटक झाल्यानंतर दादा मात्र थांबला बिकॉज त्याला पुढचे सगळे परफॉर्मन्सेस अटेंड करायचे होते कॉलेजमध्ये रात्रीच साडेबारा झाले दादा घरी आला आणि तो आला ओरडत ओरडत दादा आजी शाळे झोपलाय ना तो आजी माझ्या नाटकावर पहिलं बक्षीस मिळालं आणि मला लेखनाबद्दल खास बक्षीस दिलं बुक्या टुनकन उठून काय सांगतोस काय दादा अरे अरे कमालच केलीस हो विजयेंद्रा विजयेंद्रा म्हणजे आजी चिन्मयानंद आणि विजयेंद्रा विजू नाही बोक्या नाही कमाल केलीस हो विजयेंद्रा दृष्ट काढली पाहिजे तुझी आमच्या प्रदीपाने पण केवढ्या टाळ्या घेतल्या आजी अगदी कौतुकाने दादा आता बाबा झोपले आहेत त्यांच्या पायाजवळ गेला पाय वगैरे दाबून देत होता आणि बोक्या विजूदादा म्हणाला अरे बोक्या तू आणि बाबांनी तर कमाल केली ती आळ माझ्यासाठी खरंच हॅट सॉफ्ट टू यू असं वगैरे म्हणाला आणि इतक्यात त्यांना असं काहीतरी बाबा झोपे चुळबुळ करत होते इव्हर जस्ट टर्न असं काहीतरी टर्न होत आणि काहीतरी ते बोलले दॅट्स वॉट असं त्यांना त्यांना असं वाटलं आणि म्हणून मग त्यांनी ना अंदाज घेत होते की ते काय बोलले आणि ते सेकंड टाइम बोलले तेव्हा त्या दोघांनी ते स्पष्ट ऐकलं बोक्या विजूला म्हणावं पुन्हा नाटक बसव चांगलीशी भूमिका दे करण टाकल भोमानी तासावरची दोषी आणि सादर केलेल्या काणीतल्या कथेतली पात्रा जीवी तटटीत जाऊन आमच्या मुखार उभी रावली आणि एका वेगळ्या विश्वात ती आमकां घेऊन गेली सुंदर काणी खातीर तुमका दिनवास थँक्यू मॅम बटर फिंगर्स हे लोकप्रिय पात्र तयार करपी खैरुनिसा ए हे लेखिके बाल साहित्याच्या मळात साबार पुरस्कार फावो झाल्यात पेंगविन रॅन्डम हाऊस या प्रतिष्ठेच्या संस्थेत आणि बटर फिंगर्स ही वडल्या भुरग्यां खातीरची माळ तांणी हाडली मोनजातीचेर मानवी नदरेंतल्यान बरयल्ले तांचे कथा जेले लोकप्रिय जाल्यात पूर्ण वेळ लेखिका म्हणून तिरुअनंतपुरमात रावपी ही क्रियाशील लेखिका इंग्लिश भाषेची सहयोगी प्राध्यापिका आशिल्ली मागत्या तांणी आपले कथेचे सादरीकरण करचे
voice I did not understand, but I hope she said nice things. <laughs> <laughs> and this was lovely. What I was just watching, Parvanan, wonderful storyteller. You also, without understanding, I really enjoyed what you were doing and from the response of we obviously it was superb. Now you have to bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to read. Emma, I went it is not a storyteller. I will read from my book. So I'm just reading excerpts from one from How's I Butterfingers since I'm known for this series. It is a Butterfinger series. This is the first book in the series and it's my first book, first novel. And the latest book that has come out is The Couch Potato Who Said Ouch and Other Funny Stories. So a little bit from both and from my, from my book for adults, I'll tell you about this. So I won't take too long. Well, How's That Butterfingers is a cricket-based book and it is uh, about Amar, a 13-year-old boy whose nickname is Butterfingers because you know what Butterfingers means, he drops things all the time but he's very well-intentioned and when he wants to help people, they tell him, oh, well, the best help would be that you don't help us at all. And he has a group of friends and uh, they are completely interested in cricket and they are preparing for a cricket tournament. Now I have to apologize to all the ladies here because this is a cricket-based book. I you know, the background, I put Amar into a boys' school. Apologies to the wonderful girls, ladies, cricket team that we have for winning so many matches. But then I always felt I should bring a girl. But there's need for a woman's presence. I was feeling very guilty because a lot of my readers are girls. So I got a girl to come into the book. And this girl, whose name is Minu, is come from France. So she, Amar now very friendly, he always wants to uh, make friends with people and he wants to learn French. So there is one boy, Kishore in the class, who knows a little bit of French. So he tells him, uh, he wants to talk to Minu and he tells him, please teach me some basic French. Do you know French? I'm sure many of you may be knowing French here. No, you know only Portuguese? I mean, anyway. Good you don't know French, <laughs> because we won't find fault with my pronunciation. So teach me some basic French. So in between cricket practice, Kishore taught him that je is I, I am, je suis is I am, though it's not to be used to say I am so and so, je m'appelle is my name is. Amar mugged up everything, but unfortunately got them so mixed up that the next morning he accosted Binu with unintelligible wild sounds. Jamar, su sapale, jamar, sapale, sapale. Minu looked alarmed. Jamar, apple, souffle, are you choking over jam, apple, souffle? She asked in a voice full of concern. Oh, you do talk English? asked Amar while his friends doubled up with laughter. Sure, why? And are you all right now? Amar nodded his head. Of course he is, said Kishore, speaking for Amar. We thought you knew only French, for you said merci that day. So Amar was trying to tell you in French that his name is Amar. So she says, no, I know French and I know English and Hindi too. That's a big relief, said Eric, introducing the others. When he came to Amar, he said, this is Amar, as you already know, but we call him Butterfingers. And I'll call him Jam Apple Souffle, said Minu mischievously. All laughed except Amar, who looked very embarrassed. When you're very embarrassed, what do you do? You change the subject. So he quickly changed the subject and asked, Do you know cricket? A uh, cricket, you mean? Yeah, my father is a lepidopterist. He did some research on crickets, and I find their chirping very irritating. No, no, not that cricket. Amar stopped her hurriedly as others laughed. I meant the game cricket. Oh, the game that all Indians are crazy about. There's a game going on today. No, I don't know anything at all. It's not played in France. But I'd like to learn. Yeah, certainly I would. That would be exciting. Her eyes sparkled at the prospect while the boys looked at one another in dismay. But, i uh, go on to how they are teaching her cricket. So when they go to the field, she wants to learn cricket. And Ajay, who is the captain of the cricket team, he tells Minu, this Ajay said to Minu in the grounds, putting a bat in her right hand is a bat. Minu giggled. Ha! Huh? What a 
game? Crickets? Bats? Is the whole animal kingdom involved? <laughs> sort of. Arjun, who was listening for the change, Arjun is an eccentric boy, music loving. He said with a lazy grin, we have some monkeys like Amar, Ajay and Kishore, overweight donkeys like Kiran and Eric. So Amar jumps into the fray. And a dodo like Arjun, Amar completed the list for him. He is living proof that the dodo is not extinct. So the coaching begins. You hold the bat like this and hit the ball that Thomas will bowl. He will begin his over, said Ajay. What's bowl and what's over? How can you begin something that is over? Asked <laughs> Minu, holding the bat awkwardly and looking puzzled. And that's how it goes, it's a uh, I hope you will enjoy it. I'm not going to read more about this. And Couch Potato, who said, ouch, and other funny stories. I think just a little bit from this um, story that is called A Still Problem. This is about how you get saddled with all kinds of names. Parents foist names on children and you have to suffer them. So this is, st uh, the title is A Still Problem. Stella Nathan needed only a two-month business assignment in London to become still. I'm changing my name, he announced a couple of hours after his return. His parents, who were visiting Stella Nathan and his family, looked stunned. His wife, Kalpaka, raised her eyebrows. But why? his father asked. You have such a unique name, Stella Nathan. We chose it with such care from more than a hundred names. Ha! Did you have to decide on this one? Stella Nathan snorted. You don't know how difficult it is for non-Indians to pronounce my name. My colleagues in London office kept messing it up until I got this brilliant idea. Call me still, I told them. And life became bearable after that. Still? You're changing your name to still? His father was aghast. You must be crazy. But Stella Nathan shook his head, stubborn look on his face. At that moment, his eight-year-old twin sons, Shantanathan and Siddhartan, rushed into the room. They had been attending holiday classes and fell on their father with airs of joy. What have you got for us? The two spoke in chorus. They had an uncanny knack like many twins for saying the same thing in unison. Not new names, I hope, said Kalpaka, as the wife, breaking her silence. There is no question of changing their names or mine. I don't know about yours, but I'm going to change theirs, all right. We can make all the changes officially at the same time. Life will be much easier for them with an easily pronounceable name if they have to go to school in the US. The next day, Stella Nathan left the school, left the house to complete the formalities of name changing, ignoring the protests of his parents and the grimaces of his wife. He returned in the evening looking pleased. All done. Boys, you are no longer Siddhartan Stellanathan and Shantanan Stellanathan, but sit still and stand still. <laughs> Kalpaka pouted, I will choose the name for my baby, she patted her tummy. We'll settle back when the little one comes, and Stellanathan said airily, and I am still, plain still, I mean just still, rather still, only one name. I like to keep things simple, call me still from now on. Still waters run deep, his wife muttered. Ha ha ha, very funny. The newly christened Sid looked at Stan and rolled his eyes. Parents, Kalpaka. Mind you, the boys will have problems in school. Not if they go to a new school. And they go. There's a lot of removed. So then the attendance is happening. So the teacher is the one who believes that everybody should be standing. You have different ways of roll call, you know. And for this teacher, everyone must stand, and when she calls the name of a child, he must put up his hand and remain standing. Because she wanted them to stand more than sit. She opened the attendance register and began the roll call. When she came to sit, she looked startled. Then said rather too loudly, eh, sit still. All the students sat down silently. <laughs> Who told you to sit? She gave the class a general glare. Present man, Sid raised his hand. Hmm. Anyway, now that you're all seated, please remain seated. Stand still, she called. All the students jumped up. <laughs> Present ma'am, Stan waved both his arms to get her attention. Sit, please, 
she snapped. Yes, ma'am, Sid asked. Please sit down, all of you, she yelled. This is crazy. You boys, newcomers, please stand. No, I'm not addressing you. Stand still, she said. Saying stand, put up his hand. Are your names really sit still and stand still? Is your father's name still? The boys nodded their heads vigorously, poor things. The other students started giggling and very soon they started teasing the children. Stand still? Why don't you stand still? Sit still? Teacher wants you to stand still. How can you sit still? Are you still still? Are you punished stand still? Are you late still? Or are you still late? So this has been happening and how they solve it is what we have to read and find out. So this is uh, my book for, supposedly for adults, but it is uh, for anyone, in fact, when a friend heard that I was writing a book for adults, actually called and said, you've written a book for adults, tell me which are those pages. I said, no, 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 nothing like that. If you're looking for those pages, you have to go elsewhere. My book is very clean. It is from 8th standard upwards, you can read. This is a book which is uh, uh, based on a humor column I had in the Hindu, which the uh, readers liked and wanted me to compile it into a book, and that's how it is. Tongue in cheek, the funny side of life. So this is about going to a shop. It's called Skin Deep. The golden rule when you step into a shop, especially one that sells cosmetics, is to know exactly what you want. The modus operandi is simple. You ask for the item, give it a quick once over, pay the bill, grab the packet, and get the hell out of the place. Hesitate a little and you are done for. The other day I entered such a shop to buy a hair clip or maybe hair bands. I wasn't sure what to get. That irresolution proved to me my undoing. Instead of showing me an array of hair accessories, the smart and well-turned-out attendant turned all her attention to my hair, scrutinizing it with such intensity that I began to feel nervous. Whatever was wrong with it, I was sure I didn't have dandruff. My hair was clean, well-combed and secured with a hair clip. Maybe the ride in the auto had ruffled it? I was beginning to think she was speech impaired when, to my relief, she broke her silence. The relief was short-lived, though, for she began with, Why don't you straighten your hair? I shook my head emphatically, knowing my husband calls such hair electrified hair, and I don't wish to shock him. <laughs> she quickly assured me she hadn't meant permanent straightening. We have an excellent hair straightening shampoo, good for curly hair. No thanks, I said, and my hair is wavy, not curly. I like to get these things straight. She scanned my hair again, and now she had found her tongue. There was no stopping her. She aired her views and suggestions freely. My hair looked dull and lifeless. She had just the right shampoo and conditioner for it. Besides, hair should be more vibrant. Had I considered streaks in different colors just for a change? Shriek! I shrieked, my face turning different colors in horror. At my age, she frowned in disapproval at my lack of sportsmanship and reverted to recommending a special shampoo and a conditioner. A free hairbrush came with it, she added, a cunning gleam in her eye. Free? I brightened, bit the bait and said, I'll take it, I mean them. You know how we fall for free. It was lunchtime and I was the only customer. The other sales girl who had been watching from a distance now came over to join forces with the first attendant. She examined my face minutely, making me blush, and proclaimed, all wrong. I know, I sniffed, a poor thing but my own. I meant your eyebrows, she said. Ah, I should have seen it coming. I have heard this so often. Why don't you shave them? Pat came my stock reply. My husband doesn't approve. The first attendant raised her immaculately shaved eyebrows sardonically as if to say, oh, that husband again. But it was true, and like others who had asked me the same question and received the same answer, she declined to comment. A woman can always get away with things by citing her husband's disapproval, but it doesn't work the other way around. If a man were to mumble, my wife doesn't like it, he's bound to get to invite pitying looks and remarks like, oh, of course, you poor fish, we always knew you were handpicked. Now the second girl peered into my eyes, what she saw pleased her. 
She informed me rather jubilantly that three or four of my eyelashes had turned white. She had a perfect mascara to my mask it. That's all right, I assured her. All of Boris Becker's lashes are white. <laughs> For the first time, she looked uncertain and I pepped up. I had served an ace and I pressed home my advantage. No mascara for me or any other eye makeup. She shrugged and curled her red lips into a pout. I was about to ask for my bill when a third attendant, full of good food, strode into the store and promptly joined the board of examiners. Beginning to sag, she announced, passing a quick eye over me. Eh? I was shocked. What cheek? Your cheeks. Jaw. Jawline, she explained. Oh, so, I retorted. Will get worse with neglect, asserted the first attendant. As well as the rice will, the lines on your forehead, around your mouth, your eyes, the second girl added ominously. We have skin tightening creams, the third one hissed. I buckled under this verbal assault and battery. When I left the place, it was with a heavy purse, I'm sorry, with a light purse, a heavy heart and a heavier carry bag. On reaching home, I realized I hadn't purchased the hair bands, or was it a hair clip? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the nice stories. Reading is also an art. Vachan hile ki te kala sa yam kaya sadari karanatlam kaita devare guru. Bomanist Neha Singh. Why loiter Navachis by Lancha Hakkachi Zani Kurundupi Muhim Saveta? Ek Sangatak Lekhika Tancha I Need to Pee Yapustaka South Asia Book Puraskarazo Sagrat Bur Puraskar Fauzela. The Utkrushta Sangatak Prasarak Zachitakar BBC Nyun Tanka Sausaratla Shambur Prabhavi by Lamadli Ek Munvetsun Kalla. Havinanti Gurta Kudani Aplika Prasarak. Thank you and बहुत मतलब आप लोग बहुत patiently सब चीजें सुन रहे हैं तो मैं कोशिश करूँगी कि सब छोटा-छोटा रखूँ हिंदी आप लोगों को समझ में आती है सबको ठीक है आपने Pluto और Cycle magazines का नाम सुना है क्या हाँ तो ये कुछ कविताएँ कहानियाँ हैं जो Pluto और Cycle magazine में आ चुकी हैं उन्हीं के साथ मैं हिंदी में लिखती हूँ और अंग्रेजी में भी लिखती हूँ पर इस वक्त मैं हिंदी में अपनी कुछ कविताएं और कहानियाँ सुनाऊँगी तो पहले एक कविता है जो मैंने सबसे पहले कविता हिंदी में लिखी थी वो है तो जब हम स्कूटर सोचते हैं तो हम उसको मम्मी से एसोसिएट करते हैं या पापा से इसीलिए मैंने कविता लिखी जिसका नाम है मम्मी का स्कूटर <laughs> तो कविता कुछ ऐसी है कि स्कूटर पे निकली मम्मी की सवारी स्कूटर पे निकली मम्मी की सवारी मम्मी है हल्की और हेलमेट है भारी मम्मी है हल्की और हेलमेट है भारी पछाड़ा है ट्रक को पछाड़ी है लारी ऐसी दबंग है मम्मी हमारी कि स्कूटर भी समझे है खुद को फेरारी उसके बाद जो मैंने दूसरी कविता लिखी प्लूटो के लिए तो जब हम रोटी के बारे में सोचते हैं तो हम मम्मी के बारे में सोचते हैं पापा के बारे में तो मैंने लिखी पापा की रोटी <laughs> कल पापा ने रोटियां बनाई थोड़ी फुलाई थोड़ी जलाई कुछ पर यूरोप के नक्शे बनाए बाकी पर शेर सी लकीरें बनाई पर हमने बड़े चाव से खाए आज पापा भटूरे बनाएंगे पता नहीं कितने तलाएंगे कितने जलाएंगे पर अगर हम चाव से ना खाएंगे तो पापा खाना बनाना कैसे सीख पाएंगे तो मैं बंबई में रहती हूँ और वहाँ के लोग छोटे छोटे चीजों से बहुत डरते हैं जैसे छिपकली कॉकरोच मकड़ी और सोसाइटीज में बाकायदा लड़ाइयां होती हैं ओवर पेट डॉग्स एंड स्ट्रे डॉग्स 
कि स्ट्रे डॉग्स को खाना डालना है कि नहीं पेट डॉग्स को कहाँ पे घुमाना है वगैरह वगैरह तो इस तरीके के जो बड़े शहर होते हैं उसमें लोग कितना इंटाइटेड फील करते हैं कि ये सारी जगह बस हमारी है तो उस पर मैंने कविता लिखी इस घर में कौन रहता है अम्मा पापा भैया मैं कहने को टोटल चार हैं चूहा चूहिया बच्चे तीन वो भी तो अपने यार हैं एक छिपकली दो मेंढक चींटी की लंबी कतार है पांच कॉकरोच छह मकड़ी मक्खी आती बार बार है लीक हुई है सर में जो बनने को तैयार है मच्छर है 105, सांप तो अपना सुपरस्टार है इस घर में चार नहीं देखो तो रहते कई हजार हैं और इन्वायरमेंट ऑफकोर्स इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक पर अक्सर बच्चों को लगता है कि वो टॉपिक बड़ी बोरिंग तरीके से प्रेजेंट किया जाता है हालांकि मैंने इन्वायरमेंट के ऊपर लिखना है ये सोच के ये कहानी नहीं लिखी वो बस आ गई क्योंकि मैं थिएटर भी करती हूँ तो मैं अक्सर सोचती हूँ कि अगर बच्चों को हम अलग अलग थिएटर के कॉस्ट्यूम्स और थिएटर के कैरेक्टर्स दे दें और उसके साथ कुछ मज़ेदार बना सकें तो क्या होगा तो मैंने कहानी लिखी थी प्लूटो के लिए पेड़ जब स्कूल में होने वाले नाटक में सनी को पेड़ का रोल दिया गया तो पहले तो उसने साफ मना कर दिया पेड़ के ना तो कोई डायलॉग ना कोई डांस तब प्ले की डायरेक्टर मिनी ने उसे याद दिलाया कि पेड़ बनना वो भी उनके शहर में कितना खास रोल है तो वो मान गया दरअसल सनी और मिनी के शहर में पेड़ बचे नहीं थे एक भी नहीं एक महीना प्रैक्टिस चली पर शो वाले दिन सनी स्कूल पहुंचा ही नहीं अगले दिन मनी ने मिनी ने उसकी क्लास ली हाँ भाई सनी क्या हो गया था सनी बोला मैं सुबह सुबह पेड़ बनकर घर से निकला तो था पर एक चिड़िया मेरे सिर पर आ बैठी अब बताओ कैसे आता तो उसके जाने के बाद आ जाते उसके जाने के बाद जैसे ही चला दो दोस्त आकर मेरे आसपास छुपन छुपाई खेलने लगे उनके जाने के बाद आ जाते फिर उनके जाते ही एक आंटी आकर मेरी छाव में सो गई कैसे आता उनके जाने के बाद आ जाते उनके जाते ही एक गिलहरी मेरे ऊपर चढ़ गई उतरने के बाद आ जाते एक बिल्ली मेरा तना नोचने लगी उसके नोचने के बाद आ जाते एक लड़की मेरी छाव में बैठ किताब पढ़ने लगी उसके जाने के बाद आ जाते एक अंकल मेरी टहनी पर धागा बांध गए उनके जाने के बाद आ जाते अब तो मैंने ठान ही लिया था कि अब नहीं रुकूंगा पर तभी तीन कुत्ते मेरे नीचे पकड़ पकड़ाई खेलने लगे तो क्या हुआ हुआ तो कुछ ज्यादा नहीं उनमें से एक को बहुत तेज सुसु आया और मैं गीला हो गया तो गीले ही आ जाते चला तो था पर देखा चार आदमी मेरी तरफ भागते हुए आ रहे हैं वो चिल्ला रहे थे एक पेड़ बच गया शहर में और हमें पता भी नहीं चला इसमें तो दो टेबल एक चेयर एक बेड तक निकल आएगा अच्छे पैसे मिलेंगे मेरी तो सिट्टी पिट्टी गुम हो गई घर की तरफ भागा पहुंचते ही कॉस्ट्यूम उतार फेंका और सारा दिन घर में ही छुपा रहा बड़ा डरते डरते आज बाहर निकला हूं मिनी एक रिक्वेस्ट है आगे से प्लीज मुझे पेड़ जितना डेंजर रोल मत देना अब ऐसे लास्ट कविता है लड़की और छिप गई मेरी एक सहेली है कहने को वो छिपकली है बड़े दिनों से कह रही थी यार चल एक दिन के लिए बस जगह बदल लेते हैं तू बन जा छिपकली और मैं एक लड़की सो अगले दिन वो मेरे घर और मैं उसकी दीवार पर कीड़ों के पीछे भागती रही एक दो बार पकड़ छूटी और धम से गिरी नीचे दोपहर को जाके तरीका समझ आया फिर लंबी सी जीप घुमा के मैंने कीड़े को धर दबाया फिर बड़ी देर चूस चूस कर खाया दीवार से चिपकी चिपकी लटकी लटकी सारे कोने छान मारे 
दो तीन कीड़े और मिले उन्हें खाए मारे चटकारे सूरज ढला और शाम हो गई अंधेरा बढ़ने लगा डर सा लगने लगा रात होने वाली थी और मैं अकेली छिपकली तभी छिपकलियों का एक झुंड वहां आया चलो सहेली घूम कर आए वो बोली इतनी रात को अच्छी लड़कियों मेरा मतलब है अच्छी छिपकलियों को इतनी रात बाहर नहीं घूमना चाहिए मैंने उन्हें समझाया ये इंसानों वाले नियम अब हमें मत समझाओ चलना है तो चलो वरना चुपचाप यहीं सो जाओ लड़की बनकर तो ना सही चलो कम से कम छिपकली बनकर ही सही अपना शहर रात में कैसा दिखता है ये तो देखा हूं चल पड़ी मैं छिपकलियों के साथ एक दीवार से दूसरी दीवार एक घर से दूसरे घर एक गली से दूसरी गली घूमती रही गाती रही चलती रही सुस्ताती रही भूख लगी तो कीड़े खाती रही तभी एक बड़ा सा पंजा किसी का मेरी पूछ पर पड़ा छिपकलियां बोली भाग भाग मैं चिल्लाई कोई बचाओ मुझे कोई बचाओ छिपकलियों की सरदार बोली बहन तुम ही हो अपनी सुपर हीरो अपना कमाल दिखाओ मैंने पूरा जोर लगाया और निकल आई पंजे की कैद से अगले दिन जब अपने घर पहुंची तो मेरी सहेली छिपकली बोली यार तुम्हारे घर दिन भर मजा तो बहुत आया पर जब रात को मेरा मन बाहर जाने का हुआ तो तुम्हारे भाई ने मेरी चोटी पकड़ ली मैंने चोटी काट कर उसके हाथ में रख दी और भाग गई बाहर मैंने बहुत गलत किया ना उसने कहा तुमने बिल्कुल सही किया तुम्हारी दुम का भी कुछ यही हाल हुआ है थैंक यू मैम आज हा चार मानेस्तान जे खाशेपण है कि हा चार चार चौगान मेलू आप खीर कथा कथन के दनपार नीद जी आता पे नीदेतान जागे के लिए सत्र कथा दर्शन दर्शन आशि हा सत्र निश्चित फायदो जो आसतलो देखु हा कथाकार तायो पाता मगत भाई को भाषा मंडल राज हाउस तेज डॉग इयर्स बुक स्टॉ शॉप हाँ स्टॉल्स आसा को भाषा मंडल नव्यान प्रकाशित जी हुमानी आ भारत गोय की राजचिन्ना निबंधा तेज मज्जा मस्ती एक वो शिक्षणिक गीता देशभक्ति गीता एनिमेशन ये सगले आसपावे पेन ड्राइव तेज हेर पुस्तक विक्रेक आसा तिवी विकती घेन तुम्हें कर सगैंक देव बरें करूँ